Hello and welcome to the tutorial on how to use the student self service systems at Mulungushi University. So the first uh, point of entry or your starting point will always be the Mulungushi main website. So to get to the Mulungushi main website, you're simply going to open up your browser and in your browser, you are going to search for Mulungushi University. And once you click search, you should be able to see a link that will take you directly to the main website, which is the very one at the top. So you can access the main website at https www.mu.ac.com. So including the full colon and the slashes as well. So when you get to the main website here, you have various menu options that allow you to navigate to various parts of the main website usually at the main top center is important information that needs to be announced or accessed by either members of staff and students then you have a section for admission fees and payments news and media so without uh, in addition to seeing the information right here at the top the, another point where you can find information is under the announcements so i'm simply opening up this section to see the announcements then you have a list of short courses and other information with regards to admission and so on and so forth but as new students your focal points are going to be the students menu the schools library and departments so underneath the students menu uh, you have the following two options at the top we have the e-learning portal and the student information system link. So the e-learning portal is going to take you to the learning management system and the student information link is going to take you to Eduro, which is essentially the student information system itself. But before we go to these two links, let's quickly go down to the very last item uh, on this menu, which is your orientation web page. So when you click the first year orientation web page, you will be presented with the following information. So I'll quickly go through this, although you should have been able to see this information if you're watching this video. So you have a welcome paragraph welcoming you to the university. You have information with regards to orientation that you are going to be attending for a week. And then you have the steps that you need to complete in order to uh, completely be admitted into the university. So the first step is to join uh, the Telegram orientation group because this is where there will be uh, communication from members of staff with all the students all at once. So you simply download Telegram onto your mobile phones and join using this link. Step number one is to understand the university year. So the university year consists of two semesters and two vacations in between them. Each semester is roughly 14 weeks long and the vacations between the two are going to vary depending on which semester has ended. So new students uh, always get confused when trying to figure out which academic year or what semester they are in. But essentially we have two semesters in one year. We have semester one, which begins roughly in August and September. And then we have semester two that begins late January and early February. So now that you've understood that the university year starts in August slash September and the way in which you are going to be naming your academic years will be the current year that you are in and half of the following year. So most of the semesters are going to be listed as 2021 slash 2022 semester one. And thereafter, we are going to have a 2021 slash 2022 semester two and so on and so forth. And then moving on, your second step is identifying your school, the department and your program. This is very important because it answers a lot of questions with regards to how much money you are required to pay to fully register. So Mulungushi has six schools. We have the School of Agriculture and Natural Resources. We have School of Business. We have School of Education, School of Science, Engineering and Technology, School of Social Sciences. And finally, 
School of Medicine and Health Services. So each school is divided into various departments and within each department you are going to find various programs. And then finally, your programs are then further divided into the individual courses that you will be taking from your first year all the way until your, f your fourth or fifth or sixth year if you're doing medicine. So now, how, how do you identify which school you are in? So we have a list of all the schools and their relevant departments. So on your acceptance letter, that information should be there. But in the event that you are still not uh, clear on which school you belong to, you can simply collapse these drop down arrows and then see which programs are listed under which school. Thereby, you are able to identify what your fees are going to be. So let's say you registered for Bachelor of Science uh, in Agriculture. This means you are part of the School of Agriculture and Natural Sciences. And then within the School of Business Studies, these are the departments. We have Department of Law, Labor and Human Resource Management, Department of Business Studies. So if, for instance, you registered for Banking and Finance, you have Bachelor of Banking and Finance here. This means you are under the School of uh, Business and specifically under this department. So this means now that you've identified which schools you are you belong to so you can check the list for school of education and then we have school of science engineering and technology although i should mention that for the students admitted into uh students who are wishing to take medicine they are first housed under school of science engineering and technology are set and these uh, programs will be bachelor of science in pre-engineering pre-med and so on so in your first year you are cutted under the school of science engineering and technology because you'll be taking the courses that are offered within the school and then in second year you are then transferred over to school of medicine and health sciences and these are the list of uh, programs listed under the school of social sciences so now that you know which school you belong to which program you are taking and even maybe which department that program belongs to. You can then move on to step number three, which is calculating your fees. Then for step number three, the condition for admission into the university for the undergrad full-time programs, that is the 2021 slash 2022 intake, you are required to pay at least 50% of semester one in order to be fully admitted and for your course approval to be valid so here we have a schedule of all the fees that are required for different catering options so if you are planning on doing non-self catering at the mu houses you know which school you belong to you have the total amount that you need to pay for the semester and you have also been given an approximation of what the 50% payment is. So what you need to look for as first years is this row that says first year for six weeks because you'll be admitted for six weeks. And then in the last eight weeks, you are going to transition into online learning. So for self-catering, the new highs uh, accommodation, it has its own fee structure in terms of lodging. So you are also given the total amount that you need to pay for the semester as well as the 50 percent payment in the same way if you're going to occupy the rock hostels that is self catering you have the corresponding lodging amounts and the total fee and the 50 percent payment that you need for a valid course registration and admission finally if you are going to be a non-residential student or a day scholar you have your corresponding tuition fee, the total, and your 50% payment as first years. So also ensure that when you have your late registration, meaning you do not do your registration by 15th September, your account will be credited with a 300 kwacha should you still want to come to Mulungushi University. And then also note that the moment you are uh, 
pay using installments, you are also liable to charge an additional 200 kwacha to these totals. So these amounts aren't added in this schedule. So these will be added at the end and when you are done with your course registration. So once you've identified uh, which school you belong to, which was step number two, the program that you're studying, you now know what your total fees are and what your 50% minimum should be. You can then go ahead and apply for accommodation should you choose to be catered by the university for the six weeks that you are on campus. So you have a link that you can use to register and this will take you to the student information system itself. From there, you need your username, which is your student number and your corresponding password, which was listed under your admission letter. And if you've got any other queries, you can call the following numbers. So you have understood the academic year and calendar that it begins in August and runs all the way to uh, the following year in June. You know which school you belong to, you know the exact program that you're taking, and you also know what your uh, fee structure is. You've applied for accommodation. You can now go ahead and make payments using the following payment options. So for Mulungushi University, you can apply through FNB, Zanaco, Atlas Mara, ZICB, and Indobank as well. So for the corresponding payment methods, and uh, you have all the information on how you go about making those payments. So with FNB, you can do this over the counter through mobile banking or internet banking. So depending on what uh, banking facilities you have in your town or which method is easier, you can choose any of the five options available. And then we have the student self-service section. This is basically going through the two main systems that we use, which are Edgero, which is the student information system, and Moodle, which is your learning management system. So how do these two systems differ? So the first one, which is Edgero, is the one that is going to support your key academic activities, such as your admission into the university, course registration from your first year until your final year, your invoicing and housing, all your payment information, accommodation history and accommodation application. It will also show your progression from first year up until the final year and whether or not you changed programs. And then finally, your graduation. So that's what you are going to do on the student information system. On the other hand, the learning management system, which is Moodle, is there to ensure that you are able to access learning resources throughout the course of your stay from your first year up until the final year. So on, your, on the learning management system Moodle, this is where you are going to find resources such as your lecture slides, your assignments and assignment submission links. You are going to be able to interact with fellow students in the course from various programs and also take certain tests and quizzes. So from here on out, we are now going to move on to these nine points. We are going to see how we can log into Edgero, see what your course registration looks like, how to confirm your payments and view your balance, accessing your timetable, logging into Moodle and seeing an overview and features of Moodle and also how to navigate among us all the courses on Moodle and your student gradebook. So in order to do that, remember your starting point will always be the main website. So here on the main website, I'll simply go back to the home page, although it isn't necessary. Under the students menu again, we have your e-learning portal and the student information uh, system link. So we'll start with Edgero, which is your student information link. So here we have access back to the main website should you need to go there, a link to take you to Moodle, a link for staff email and also new students who need to reset their passwords. So let's assume you have your student name and password already done. So your username is always going to be your student number. 
So you're simply going to type it into the login form and type in your password under the password field and then click login to enter. So underneath our logged in uh, student information system, we have the following menus. We have a, a menu option to take us to your personal information, apply for accommodation, a link to see your inbox for help desk tickets that you send, a link to access support through help desk, your grades, you can see payment information, you can see and view your CA, access the timetable, evaluate courses at the end of the semester, see your payment options, your view your course registration, and finally print your exam docket. So let's start with our first menu option, which is view personal information. So under personal information, you should be able to see an overview of all your personal data. We start with the name. So in this case, the name of the user is called academic office or academic admissions office. You have your student number, you have a gender listed, the NRC, the date of birth, your registration status, basic student access level for the system and uh, the exam center listed, which is either Lusaka, Kawe, Ndola, Choma, Kasama, and I think Chipata. There should be six. So depending on where you're going to write your final exam from, you can change your exam center. And then to your right here, we can see the status of the student, which is active, and other status to denote whether you are a full-time student or part-time or distance. So in this case, this is a full-time student. Then you move on down, we have program information. So program information has the following details. It will show you what uh, study you're listed for. So this is your program name. So this should be Bachelor of, Com of Science in Computer Science or whatever program you applied for and the associated school. Then moving on down, this is where you are going to see a list of all the courses that you have registered. And then further down, you can see student contact information, emergency information for the next of kin, and education history if it is available at time of admission. So that's how, that's what is available for under personal information. Then we have apply for accommodation. This menu allows you to apply for accommodation once you have made the necessary payments. So because I haven't made necessary payments, you'll be shown a message indicating that you haven't made any payments and you need to make the minimum amount in order to proceed with booking and in this case it's telling me i need 5375 to proceed with booking and then from there we are going to skip and then go down to the grade section so underneath the grade section this is where you are going to see the results at the end of the semester once your final results are published and i'll show you in just a moment what this looks like for someone who has had some courses and then we have payments. So this will show you a full financial statement history from the time that you register at Mulungush University in first year all the way until you graduate. And it will show you any time you make a payment under credit and any time you are billed from accounts that will be listed under debit and a description will also be shown. And then we move down to the CA. So this is where you are going to confirm your CA before your final results are published. So when you register at Mulungush University for a program and your course registration is approved, you go through the learning process, you do your assignments and your tests. There is going to be what is called a continuous assessment that is necessary for you to have another component known as your exams in order to come up with your full grade. Now, before you write your exams, it is very important and imperative that you verify 
your CA so that you do not get uh, marked wrongly or the total of your final grade isn't lower than you expect. And then finally, or oh, not finally, the next section is the timetable. Now, with the timetable, you are able to see timetables for both full-time and distance students. And this is the reason why I said it is important to know which school you belong to and the name of your program in order to correctly identify your timetable. So if you go back to the orientation page, this is where this was stipulated. So you need this, identify your school so that you know which timetable you are going to follow. So under the uh, student information system, you have a list of the program codes or abbreviations that you are going to learn throughout your stay at Mulungushi, but you have a description of the full program name. So you simply scroll down until you find your relevant program. So since this student that we're using for demonstration sake is doing Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, you simply go down until you find the relevant course. Now also note that for each uh, program that you are studying in the timetabling system, you have these numbers appended at the end. So this could be BSCBED with a two, three, and so on. So these numbers simply mean what year have you gone up to in your current program progression. So if you're in third year, you're going to look for a timetable with a three. If you're in second year, you look for the corresponding timetable with a two. And if you're in first year, you are going to look for a timetable that has a one at the end of it. Now, because we are doing Bachelor of Science in Computer Science for this individual student that we're using as a demo, these are under the foundation science. Uh, this is under the foundation science groups. So for foundation sciences, we have the groupings, group C, A, and group B. So these are the ones that take physics, maths, chemistry, and mathematics. So now, depending on how you are grouped, you are going to consult the relevant timetable. So the groupings will be communicated to you through the HOD for science and mathematics, but let's assume you are in group B. So you simply say, show timetable and you'll be able to see your timetable, the various locations and the time slots. So on Monday, you have maths and this is group B taught by Mr. Moyo E and the venue. So the timetable will always be listed in that order. It will always be the course, the lecturer taking it and the venue. And you can see right at the top here in the columns, those are the time slots. So this will be group A's timetable, rather group B, and you can also see other timetables for other programs. So let's assume you are doing Bachelor of Science in Agro Business Management first year. Remember the number at the front indicates the year. You simply say show timetable and you'll be availed the timetable. So again, we have the course name, the lecturer taking it and the venue. In the same way we have, this is the course, the lecturer in the middle, and finally the venue. And you eventually get to know what the venues are once you've moved around campus. So that's your, that's your class timetable. Then we have course evaluation, which you would do at the end of each semester. Course evaluation is important because you need to do that before you are shown your final exam results. So always evaluate your course, give good feedback so that the lecturers are able to improve on the lecture delivery for the course and also improve on the material. And then we have payment options, which show you the different banks and methods that I use, which are, which is what is simply on the first year orientation page. And then Course registration also takes you through the course registration process. So now under course registration, the first thing would be verify which exam center you are writing in. So let's assume you've changed your mind from Lusaka. You want to write in Kawe. You are going to save the center. And then from here, 
you are going to be presented with a list of the courses that you are going to take make sure that you double check that the information you are submitting is correct so another key point or thing to note with regards to courses is that when you register at the university of course you are admitted into a program and now that program has got multiple courses in it so for any degree program at mulungushi university there's probably a minimum of about 30 to 50 courses that you will take depending on how long it is if it is a four-year degree program that will be 40 courses if it is five it will be 50 courses and so on and so forth now the way you identify which courses to register for is as follows first of all you probably need to go to the schools section on the main website so remember the menu on the main website so under schools let's say you are doing something in school of science engineering and technology you simply go down to programs or select programs and you'll be listed all the programs that are available under the school so if we go to bachelor of Compu bachelor of science in computer science and we click details you should be able to see a list of the years and the corresponding courses so now take note of the following for any first semester course across the entire university the number is always going to end in a one so chemistry ends in the one all of the numbers will end in a one for this column called semester one so even if you go all the way into third year it ends in a one very important so that you do not select a wrong course in a wrong semester and then for courses under semester two all of them are going to end with the number two so regardless of course if it's semester two the course code will always end in semester two semester one courses end with the one semester two courses end with the semester two so if i go to business studies the same will apply if i'm going to look at bachelor of commerce i expect that all semester one courses are going to end in a one and all semester two courses will always end in a two and you can see so it ends in a two rather a one and then this one ends in a two if i move on to third year everything ends with a two and everything ends in a one for semester one and this will be across the board for every program so now that you know which courses you are taking you will simply tick the relevant courses so if you're doing the foundation courses or the sciences or the ns courses even though bgm has been listed with bgm01 101 you are going to take this course next semester so there are exceptions to the rule this is one example so if you're doing ns please do not select bmg you are going to take that next semester everyone else in first year is taking the course this semester so chemistry maths and physics and then once you are sure you are sure and you've confirmed that it's the correct four courses yes you are simply going to submit your course registration now when you submit your course registration it will also tell you what your total invoice is going to be now this is the fee that you need to pay and if you are happy with this invoice you're simply going to say yes this information is correct and your courses have been saved for course registration so you simply return to your profile or simply go to personal information now when you have registered for a semester this is what your course progression is going to look like once it's updated you're going to see a list of all the courses you've registered for and their current status so these courses are not approved meaning you can't access lecture slides tests and other learning materials on moodle because you have not had your courses approved now in order to have your courses approved you need to make sure that you have paid 
the minimum 50% requirement. So if I go back to the orientation web page for, let's say I'm, a, I'm going into the rock hostels and I'm under School of Science, Engineering and Technology, I need to make a payment of 6,167 and 15 gwe in order for my courses to be approved. So once your courses, once you have made the payments, the HODs are going to approve your courses. Then when your courses are approved, you can then go ahead and see the resources on Moodle. So if we go to course registration, you have successfully registered your courses, but they need to be approved. So once you have your courses approved, then they will start populating in this menu bar. So as far as EDUROL, which is the student information system, these are the important things that you need to know. One, ensure your personal information is correct. Two, ensure that you pick the correct exam center and also pick the correct courses when you're doing your course registration. Remember, all semester one courses end with a one and all semester two courses end with a two. However, there are going to be exceptions of the rule for certain courses depending on the number of students who need to take that courses. So a good example is BMG 101, which has been divided in terms of which semester uh, each school takes them. Set will take anyone registered under School of Science Engineering for the first year is going to take it in second semester and everyone else in School of Education, School of Business, School of Social Sciences and School of um, Nat Agriculture and Natural Resources are typically going to uh, do it in first semester if you are not doing a science-based course, a Bachelor of Science course. But for the most part, those are the rules with regards to course registration. So now that we have gone through the important elements for EDUROL, which is our student information system, let's quickly look at the learning management system. So to access the learning management system, we have a link provided here. But if you're going to go through the main website, it will be under your students menu at the top and e-learning portal is what you click. So once you click e-learning portal, you should be presented with the login screen. So here again, you are going to enter your student number, which is your username and password. So the same student number and password that you used to log into Edgero will be the exact same details that you need for Moodle. So in this case, I'm going to use a different account to show what your registration should look like on Edgero once on rather Moodle once you've completed everything on Edgero. So in the event that one, you know the academic year, you know which school, you know which program, you've identified the courses that you're taking. In first year, registration for the first semester should be automatic. And then in second semester, that's when you start selecting your own courses. You've also paid the minimum which is 50%, you should be able to see the courses reflect on Moodle. If you do course registration and you have not finished paying the 50% minimum, you will not be able to see the following that we are looking at. So on Moodle, once you log in, you are presented with what is known as the student dashboard or dashboard. So moving on, we have links or to access modules for semester one and modules for semester two. And then we have another section that allows you to see what courses you recently accessed and you can score through them left and right. But most importantly, you have a section called course overview. This is where you are going to find a list of all the courses that you are going to register from going to register for in a particular semester and academic year. Because what tends to happen is sometimes the courses are appended on your navigation left menu here, but for others, the courses aren't presented here. So it isn't a given fact that your courses should always appear to the left. 
if your course is missing here just simply check the course overview section so you can change the overview in terms of how you see the course overview so some people prefer the card or a summary list or just the list view it really doesn't matter so these are the courses that this student is registered for and these this is where she'll be able to access materials for biology chemistry mathematics and the fundamentals of physics so now for each course you see that at the top it will tell you which corresponding school that course comes from so currently all these courses are from school of science engineering and technology so now let's quickly go through one course to see what kind of information is available so if we click on bio 111 which is uh, biology within the stood within the course you are able to see the following icons so this is a quiz anything that looks like a tick will be a quiz so depending on how the lecturers format their courses this will look different for each individual course because they are taught by different individuals and lecturers so this lecturer put up information about on how to contact them the course outline a section on lectures tutorial sheets that have been given lecture videos that the students can watch links to youtube uh, videos labs books quizzes and assignments for distance students so this is just one course so we'll simply check out another final course just to show that there's actually a very big difference in terms of how information is presented again i prefer to access courses from the course overview section so if we look at mathematics this is how the information has been formatted within this course so you see it's already different and the more you interact with uh, moodle the more acquainted you get so this is an announcements forum where you get to discuss the course and questions with other students in the course we have pdfs that you can download and read on your own and this is how the lecturer has formatted the course so the key point is now that you know how to log into edgero you can also log into moodle you can verify that your courses have been approved and once your courses have been approved you can actually access the learning resources on moodle and from there your course lecturers are going to give further guidance on how to go about the course so once you get to moodle do not panic once you start seeing quizzes and tests most likely that information was made available for students last year so all you do is simply wait for communication from your lecturers and they will advise now if you have any questions please leave comments and the people from academic office or myself will be able to respond and give answers if you have any